If you take a confetti popper like this one, mount it to a wall and tie an eight ball to an extended version of the string and drop it 90 degrees from vertical like this, the confetti popper might pop. But the question is, will it? Welcome back to Engineered Bets. The confetti not popping is favored two to one based on an audience intuition poll where people voted based on an image of this scenario. That means the confetti actually popping is a one to two underdog and it's your job to predict what will actually happen. A confetti popper is a pretty simple device. Removing the top layer, you see the compartment that houses the confetti, and then going one layer below that, you get to the chamber with the explosive charge. And I should point out that you shouldn't open these because it becomes more dangerous. Anyway, the explosive charge is wrapped here with the string attached, and similar to how a match striking a matchbox is done with friction, pulling on the string ignites the charge, which creates enough pressure to make that signature popping sound and send the confetti flying. Using a force gauge, I measured the peak force when pulling on the string for it to ignite and found that it was about 12.3 newtons. Now the last step before making my decision was to estimate the max force the 8 ball should exert on the string and compare this force to that needed to pop the popper. At the start, right after being released, there's no tension force on the string and when it reaches the bottom, the string will have the most tension. This tension can be found using Newton's second law, only looking in the radial or centripetal direction. The acceleration in this direction for circular motion is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. And I should point out for later that this radius is the same as the string length, which is also the same as the height the ball is dropped from relative to its bottommost point. Anyway, on the left hand side, summing the forces, there's the force due to gravity pulling down on it and the tension of the string holding it up. After solving for this tension, you see that every variable is a known value except for the velocity of the ball. To estimate this velocity shown here in red, it was assumed that energy was conserved, so the potential energy of the ball at the start is converted to kinetic energy. Solving this equation for the velocity, you see that it's the square root of 2 times gravity times the height. With this velocity estimated, you can plug it back into Newton's second law. Now simplifying this, because as mentioned earlier, the radius and the height are both the same value, you see that the max force exerted on the string is 3 times the weight of the object. That means according to this way of modeling it, the string length doesn't matter, which is why I figured why not extend the string a bit more to make it more interesting. Anyway, to attach the billiard ball to this extended string, I decided to 3D print a little hat for the billiard ball, which I then attached using a hot glue gun. The total mass of this object was 180.1 grams, which means the max force on the string should be about 5.3 newtons, which is substantially less than the 12.3 newtons needed to pop it. Keep in mind this is just a simplified model and you should pause now to think on your own how reality will vary from it, factoring in your own intuition and the odds to make your decision in the comments. And now it's time to see what actually happened. The confetti popper actually did not pop. Congrats to those who got it right, for those curious raising it up all the way so it's more of a free fall with an abrupt stop did work. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.